Hello there all my DIY artsy crafty friends. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Dee, the Messy Perfectionist. And today I'm going to be sharing with you guys a full color along that I did out of this beautiful book, Circle of Life by Mela Pamini Chetsi Pangiotu. I apologize if I butchered her name. Next to it, I have the swatch card, which I used to complete this page here using my Prismacolor Premier pencils. If you guys would love to follow along with this, you can refer back to the swatch card that I went ahead and placed here. And I do a slow photo of it as well so you can see them up close, make sure you can read the numbers clearly as well as see the colors that are outlined in case you happen to want to follow along. Never mind the little spots that are on the side there. That's where I was kind of testing my um, fine line pen as I uh, did kind of the finishing touches on the page at the end. So that's all those are. But I went ahead and pulled out all of my Prismacolor pencils that are listed here and went ahead and got started. And as you can see here, I had already started the shell of the turtle when I realized I should just film this and do it as a little color along because it's such a pretty page. I'm just pointing out the uh, greens that I used here to start with and then I move into the actual color along and finish the page on camera. I hope that you guys like this video. If you do and you find it helpful in some way, please be sure to leave me a like and comment, share, subscribe, all of those things. It really does help a new channel out so much. And I'm so honored to have you here. And I'm so thankful and grateful to all of you who have subscribed and your support. You guys are just awesome. Please let me know what you'd like to see next and I will do my best to comply. If you would love to see a flip through of this book, I would be more than happy to do so as well. Uh, I will probably periodically just talk from time to time, maybe mentioning something that I did or why I, I did a particular thing the way that I did. But for the most part, I will be silent and just let the pretty music play in the background. <laughs> and uh, I will see you towards the end of this video. Thanks for watching. As you see, I just decided to go ahead and continue working on the outside of the turtle first, working on his little shell and then also his flippers and his head. So that's what I'm working on now, just kind of going in those areas a little bit more, darkening where I want to darken and better blend the shell uh, where I felt like it needed to be shaded and worked on. I definitely go back and forth as I am coloring you know how it is when you see things that you missed or also uh, things that you want to add later on so I even though I'm working on this now there are points in the middle of the video and towards the end where I even layer a little bit more uh, color down
Now I'm starting work on the center of the turtle, which is the sunset and the ocean with the uh, coral and the seaweed below. Definitely my favorite part of this page. I knew that I wanted to do a purple and orangish pinkish kind of sunset. That was the first thing that I thought of when I looked at this picture, and so that's what I, I did. As I started on the dark blue of the water, I realized that I really wanted to add the gold tones into the water to represent that reflection of the sun on the water. And this is where I started to get a little worried because as you guys know, I'm not a professional. I am totally learning. This is kind of new to me and I'm just kind of going with it and of course sharing my experience with you so I was like oh my goodness I hope it doesn't look too green you know I wanted that kind of reflection to to be apparent not like I just muddied a bunch of colors together and uh, luckily I really like the way that it came out so sometimes we just have to be brave right and just try it try it just go ahead and try it
the next part that I cover are these little I was calling them snail shells on the bottom here I knew that I wanted them to kind of be purple pink iridescent like uh, if anybody else is familiar with Animal Crossing out there there's you get those uh, the seashell series that's kind of purple iridescent I sort of was thinking of that as I was coloring in uh, I cannot remember the name of them, but any other Animal Crossing New Horizons fans out there will know exactly what I'm talking about. So <laughs> drop me a comment below if you guys know what I'm referring to.
funny enough this color that I'm using right here this chartreuse has become one of my favorite pencils to use for highlighting and what's funny about that is this is a color that I probably would have never used before just not really that into yellows or neons and things like that but uh, again as I started experimenting more and trying to do more advanced techniques for shading with my pencils I realized how invaluable all of those yellows are so I do wind up coming back to that one often to use as a highlighter, especially with the green. It just makes it pop and it looks so good. And, and I love this color too, to kind of burnish and blend colors and give it that kind of sage looking um, green. I just think it comes out really pretty. So I really wanted to get that pink and yellow glowing effect to represent like a lotus flower and have kind of an evenness to the color scheme of the page a little bit where I tried to have like the purples and oranges in the sunset also represented in a lotus have those purples pull down to the shells and then also later on uh, at some of the, the fish towards the top of the page just to kind of make it look a little bit more cohesive.
I felt like all of these tiny fish and the fish that were kind of spread out were the things that took the most time, whether they were or not, I I'm not sure but it just felt very tedious to me, uh, which sounds awful because I really did enjoy coloring this page, but it's just always funny to me that sometimes the smallest things on a page can be the most detailed and time consuming for us. Uh, it's sometimes when we see a big page, it's the bigger areas that are easier if they're more solid or you know chunky shading, but these little areas that you're, tr you know, I'm trying to create a little bit of depth in there so that just most of them are just not a flat one color uh, I felt like I kept going in to some of these to get a better color blend with them or whatever you want to call it but yeah I like the way some of the bigger fish came out so I tried to spend a little bit more time on some of the bigger fish
I decided to go ahead and with the darkest blue that is on my palette here and outline the turtle shell just to kind of have him pop off the page a little bit and then of course pull it down to blend in with the water.
As I said earlier, I tend to go back and forth um, as I'm coloring naturally. So before I went ahead and finished with the final blending of the background ocean water, there was areas that I was seeing that I felt like I just needed to help pop out a little bit more and using the fine liner pen helped with that. So I just kind of outline uh, some things with the lotus and some of the leaves and fish and things like that before I uh, continued on. So this is where I'm going in with that very light sagey color green and decided to blend and burnish with that. Sadly, this is also where I apparently lost some of my footage. So you see me starting this here and then it jumps just to half of the page is done and the other half I needed to do still. So I left this piece in at least so you guys could see the difference between blending and burnishing with that pale green versus not and it's such a, a dramatic difference I feel like just makes all the difference in the world for this and at this point again now that most of it is done I'm just adding in some more final touches with the uh, fine liner pen going around the leaves a little bit more just getting a little bit more definition but not a ton I didn't go crazy here
wrap up this page using my white acrylic paint marker to fill in all those kind of little black spots that were on the page representing I think bubbles and things like that and adding a few more just to give it a little bit more of that. I, I love adding the white paint marker in. It's always so amazing to me just to see these little tiny details can make just such a difference on the page. And I debated going back and forth with adding a little bit more details with the white paint marker on things like the plant life or the fish. And when I kind of just stood back and looked at it, I thought, you know what, I, I think it's enough. I just, I liked it the way it was and kind of just stopped there after I was done with the water. And this was the additional spot that I used the white paint marker on just kind of to drag a little bit of white through those clouds just to make them look a little bit uh, more pale and not as bright as compared to the sky. But that is it, you guys. I hope that you like the way it came out. I think it came out really pretty. I'm also working on the page next to it in the same color palette now. We'll share that with a monthly completed page reveal that I will do towards the end of this month. Or if I don't wind up covering that many pages, uh, we may do it every two months. But again, I thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found something inspirational or joyful in this video. And until we meet again, have a beautiful day. Bye.